stock. How mm. long did you do that? No, oh, quite a few years, back. but then uh, I, I, I used to haul the substitute the haul mail for Frank, oh. and uh, and then when Frank died, I I, I, uh, I more or less got out of the, the camping business and. and in the coin shop, and, and uh, then I started working the post office. And then when Bill Granlon took over the mail route, I, uh, I started working full time at the post office. Where was it then? Mm. I don't remember what was on the corner or where we moved over there by, by the post office. To the post office, yeah. where it is now. Yeah, but, but I think I worked in, the, in that place that used to be Mac and Meads, Bob McGinnis. And, uh, Next to the... Um, next to your drugstore? No, next to the other drugstore, Sable store. Oh, uh, by uh, the uh, railroad uh, tracks? Yeah. Okay, right down from yeah. your coin shop. Yeah, right down. Mm -hmm. then, and then they built the post office where it is now. Yeah. He worked there until he retired. He retired after 33 years or something like that. So you did all right. Yeah. Yeah. You've been retired a while, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Andy, let's hear about you being in the service. Well, who went in the service first of all your brothers? Ed went in first. You went first, then who? Just, and, just and, to a succession. And then uh, uh, I invested in September of 42. Dwayne McWilliams and I went down to Bay City to the... To the recruiting office and he wanted to get in the Navy and so he went down to the Navy recruiter and I went to the Air Force recruiter and when we got all through he says they wouldn't take me. I said, well why not? He said they said I'm colorblind. <laughs> he says I don't think I'm colorblind. So all the way home and he said now that stoplight is red isn't it? I said, yeah. yeah. And then it turns to green. Since they told me I was colorblind, <laughs> so anyway, I passed, and so, so, went home, and then a couple of weeks they called me and went down to Detroit to the, the uh, enlistment office down there, and went through the wiggle roll there, and then went from there to, to uh, Battle Creek, to Fort Custer. Oh yeah, that. And I was there about a week and, and they loaded a bunch of us on the train and, and said, you're leaving, I said, where are we going? Secret, can't tell you. Oh, yeah, sure. So there, was, there were about 15 or 16 of us in that group and, and so they put us on a train and we rode and we rode and we rode for two days and three nights and, and finally we arrived in the railroad station and we got off the train and you couldn't see a block. There was so much dust in the air. And I said, holy man, where did they, where did they put us? In the middle of a desert someplace. So they loaded us on trucks and they took us to Peterson Field and unloaded us, took us in for dinner, fed us pork chops, and I can still feel the grit in those pork chops. Oh it was God. just a terrible dust storm. And the next morning we got up and it was nice and sunny and clear and the dust was gone and looked out the window of the barracks and there's Pike's Peak. Oh, and you were in Colorado. Colorado Springs. Oh, gee. So, <laughs> so I spent the next about two and a half years there oh. working in the base hospital. I, I was in the medics, and so I worked in the base hospital. Did you have training prior to there? Did they train you? They trained me at that. They trained you. 
I worked in a lab. I was a lab technician for, Good for, you. for a long time. And then, then they packed me up and sent me to Robbins Field, Georgia, to, to medical surgical school. And I was down there for going to school for about two months. And from there they sent me to, I was at Robbins Field, Georgia, and then they sent me to Smoky Hill Army Air Base in Kansas. I was there for a while and then transferred from there to uh, Sioux City, Iowa. And stayed there for a while and, and I ended up in um, Camp McCall, Wisconsin and I worked in the separation center there and my job was doing venipunctures and we went to about we got it right down to a science. We're going through 60 men an hour. It's one a minute. We, one would draw the blood and hand the thing to the next one, and he'd empty it in the vials and label it and put it in the rack. And in the meantime, the somebody else put the band yeah, on. Yeah, you know, the other guy handed you another syringe and you hit the next one, mm -hmm. and did that all day long for wow. oh, geez, I guess about two weeks. And uh, then one day they said, you're going home. So I got my discharge there at, at uh, Camp McCoy, Wisconsin, and, and hopped on the Was Great the Lakes Ferry at Ludington, went to Ludington, got on the ferry, and, and came across the Lake Michigan, and then hitchhiked from their home. That was good. So, so was the war still going on when you were discharged then? Well, it was towards the tail end. It was, uh, I got out in, um, in uh, 1945. I got out in 1945 and, uh, and worked for the summer at uh, the drugstore and then that fall I went to For farm. Patty? For, no, for... Uh, uh, Harold Reed. Oh, Harold Reed. Harold he had the place that the, the DeWales owned it. Henry and Howard DeWale owned it. And, Were they and, brothers? You no, know, father and son. Henry was the father. And uh, Howard was Charlie DeWales' brother. Oh, okay. And, uh, and Howard got the booze and, and, and uh, he ended up closing up the pharmacy and, and and Harold Grieve bought it. And so when I got out of service, I went to work for him during the summer. And then that fall, I went and started my, my pharmacy school down at Ferris. Graduated from there in 1950. And that's when you and I, entered the picture, Miss Margaret. And then I got. I was in pharmacy school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that's when I met up with her. And, Did um, you know her from up here before? Yeah, I met her once, I think, or twice. Her, her, your brother Frank introduced us twice. Oh. Two different times. So she was going to school at Central when I was at Ferris. Oh. And, uh, well, and then we got married and it'd be 50 years the third of next month. Yeah, I know. It's and, uh, coming right up. Where were you married? In Grayling. Grayling? Yeah. We were, we were both working in Saginaw at the time. I went, I went to work at a drugstore in Saginaw and she was... Which one? Uh, Hoffman's. Hoffman's no Drug, right across from the fairgrounds. I bet she served me. I used to go there when I was oh, a kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should have. I would have been 10 years mm -hmm. old now. They had the lunch counter there. Mm -hmm. Did you know Alma Foote? Do you remember Alma Foote working there, Jolly? Jolly little lady? She was no, no. Oh gee, she worked there for years. Almeda did. Almeda, what was her name? I don't know what her last name was. But but from So you worked for Mr. Huffman there? I worked there in a couple of years. Was that like an intern? No, I was all just, through school. I had my served. internship all done. I I had written the state board exam up in Escanaba and and so uh, Ed and I decided to take a vacation and we drove out to Colorado and spent a couple of weeks touring out there. 
And well, got, good for you. Got back, I decided it was time to look for a job, and so I went down to Saginaw. My sister and her husband lived there, and he told me, go, go talk to, to Princeton and Brennan Pharmacy. And he said, mm -hmm. maybe they have a job. So I went over and talked to, to uh, Mr. Princeton, and he said, well, they didn't have an opening, but they knew somebody that did. And he said, just a minute, and I'll, I'll call him. And so he called Hoffman's and he handed me the phone, and I talked to him. And he says, uh, come on over. Great. So I went over and talked to him. He says, uh, can you start tomorrow? <laughs> I said, no, I can't. I, said, I don't have the results from my state board. Yeah, he said, I don't care. He says, he says, I need you right away. I said, well, I've got I to gotta find a place to live. And I got a few. Which sister was living in Saginaw? Uh, Justine was living Justine. in Saginaw. And so went home and got some clothes and went back. And I stayed at Justine's house and went to work down there. <laughs> Worked there for a couple of years. And then the, I heard that there was a one year, okay. And then I heard that there was an opening in Grayley at uh, uh, Max Drug Store, and Grayley was looking for a pharmacist. And so I called and talked to Mrs. Mack, and she says, well, why don't you come up and, and we'll talk. So I did. And so she says, how soon can you start? I says, well, I, I says, I'm working in Sagdahl, and I've got to give them a couple weeks at least notice. She says, well, you give them a couple of weeks notice and I'll hire you. So, so I did. And I had told Bernie Hoffman that, that the first chance I had to move north, this, is, this, is, this city stuff is not for me. I said, I want to go get north. And so he said, well, home. that that'll be fine. And so when I told him, he hated to see me leave, but he said, you got a chance to go north, take it. Then he ended you up buying. You were buying making $75 a week. Yeah, I was making $75 Saginaw. a week in Saginaw. In Saginaw. We're, we're, we're working uh, six and a half days a week. Six and a half days a week. And so uh, I expect I have to take a cut in pay to get up north. And lo and behold, she gave me a $5 raise. And she'd pay me $80 a week. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And I worked there until until we uh, bought into one year. one year, worked for her over a year, and then went down and talked to Harold, and we, I bought in to his part owner, his store. And then a few years later, two or three years later, I bought him out. So you started where he was next I, to Bob's there? Yeah, right. Okay. And, and when, when in there were you married? We were married, married in 19... After you came 51. to Ireland to work? Or you were still inside? Exactly. Uh, we were still oh, working. We were married in 1951. Yeah. We moved up to Grayling in 1952. And we, we bought in with Harold in 1953. Mm -hmm. and then, then, uh, then how long did you stay in that building? Guard DeWitt came in one day and he was I would so like to have you remodel this building for you. Who said that? Roy DeWitt. Oh, Roy DeWitt. And I said, no, I'm not interested in having this building remodeled. She said, I want a new building. He says, well, have you got a site where you can put it? And I says, well, no. But I says, I know where I want it to be. I, said, I want it in that lot next to the post office. And the post office is where the video store is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he says, who owns it? And I told him, this is Claude Rock owns it. And it's not for sale. And I says, he says, well, go talk to him. So I did. I went to see him. He said, hell no, I don't want to sell it. He said, what do you want it for? <laughs> I says, well, I'd like to put up a new drugstore there. He said, well, it isn't for sale. I said, okay. And about a few days later, phone rings, and 
Dorothy called me. She says, uh, Clyde wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. I said, when I get off work, I'll come over. And so I went over and he says, um, if you're, if you put up a new drugstore there, he says, I'll sell it to you. I said, great. How much? And so he told me, cash. I said, well, hell, I didn't have two dollars <laughs> my name at the time. I said, where am I going to get the money? So I went back and I talked to Roy and I told him, well, Dorothy called me and said that Claude has changed his mind that he will sell that. And he asked me how much and I told him. So he got out his checkbook and he wrote me a check for, I don't know, 2500 or 3000 or something like that. He said, uh, make, a, make a down payment on it. And uh, when I get things straightened around here, I'll get to the rest of it. And, uh, but don't tell him where you got the money. Cause mm -hmm. He doesn't like me. So I didn't tell him. <laughs> and so Roy owned the lot next to it. Oh. And so he says, does it make any difference to you if it's there or the next lot? And I said, no. I said, okay, he said, look, we'll uh, trade lots. He says, you buy that lot and I'll trade you for the other lot and we'll just reverse it. You can be next to the post office and then he put, uh, when they built the building, they built the building for Agnes McCready for the village nice. shop. And now she didn't want it. She wasn't interested in moving into there. But he talked her into it. So, so. We had the drugstore, and then next to us was the village shop. Mm -hmm. And what year and that was that? That was in 1963. Oh, okay. We were... That was a good move for you. We were trying to get uh, in there before summer started, and yeah. well, it was a year went by, and they didn't have the building finished. So who built it, and did Roy well, it? Roy screwed it. Mm -hmm. And so, so finally we told them, we're going to move in there the 1st of July. <laughs> the wiring wasn't in there or anything, and Johnny Leeline was doing the wiring. He said, if you move in here the 1st of July, he says, you're going to be moving in amongst the workers because he says, they won't have this finished and I won't have the wiring done by then. He says, we're going to move anyway. So we moved on the 3rd of July. Mm -hmm. So we were in there for the 4th of July. I closed up the prescription room at 6.30 and we started moving the, the uh, drugs yeah. over there and then we got some help and, and uh, moved the rest of the store. <laughs> yeah. Margaret had somebody there helping her dust the shelves and we had some place to put the merchandise. And, wow. and we were in there, opened up at uh, 11 o'clock. On the 4th of July? On the 3rd of July. July. Great. And, uh, we had uh, one of the school teachers, Dave Okander, I don't know if you remember when he was teaching here, and, and uh, Dr. Hoppy's daughter, and oldest daughter, and oh, several other people helped us move. And we moved all night long, we worked all night long. In the morning, we all went over to Bob's and had breakfast. I bought them their breakfast, and Dave had to go to school, teach school. <laughs> Were you in on that, Fran? And so no. we got everything in there. Wow, that was great. Then did you own the building that you had when you had bought the pharmacy from Mr. Greve? Yeah, I was buying the building, and so I so sold that building to uh, uh, Jack Donahue, who was, who was an attorney in town. and. Uh, uh, he then turned around and sold it to bombs. They didn't want to buy it. I tried to sell it to them, and they didn't want it. And so, so uh, I sold it to John, and he went over and says, "You want to buy the old drugstore building?" And Raleigh says, "No, he di he didn't want it." He says, "Well, I just want to." Make sure, because if you don't, I'm going to tear it down. Well, 
there's a single wall between those mm -hmm. two buildings. So they knew that if he tore the drugstore building down, they're going to be minus one wall. Mm -hmm. So they decided to buy it. So they bought it from him. Okay. And what year did you... Um Okay, say that again, Margaret. The first time we re retired was in 1983, September of 1983. And then in... And how many more, you said the first time, how many well, times? Well, in were August of 94, the bankruptcy uh, court closed the, the drugstore up. And uh, so it was closed for one month. And then the bankruptcy court hired Andy as the pharmacist to run it so that we wouldn't lose all of the customers. Mm -hmm. Though we did sell off all, a lot of our inventory during those, it was seven months before it was, it was finally settled and, and uh, we, we got it back ourselves. Well, who, was, who, who was the bankruptcy? It wasn't you. Jim Clark. Oh, okay. The one that, that you had sold it to. That we had sold it to Jim, to Jim Clark and Elizabeth Howe, and uh, they operated it until they, they were closed up. It was less than a year, wow. Ele eleven months. And in the meantime, he opened the pharmacy up in Glens Market in Greenland. Oh. And uh, so when we, we got it back in in April of. Of uh, ninety-five. Ninety-five. I'm eighty-five. 85. A April of eighty-five. Okay. And uh, we operated until September of of uh, eighty eighty-nine. We sold it again to. Uh, oh, so you you came out of retirement for quite a while then. Well, we had to build the business up. It yeah. Was, it was totally ruined. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? So, uh, so in '89 is when you were actually that's, finished. That's when we yeah. were finished. Mm -hmm. with them. Okay, let's go back to the other three Sherwin boys that were in the service. We got Ed's and Andy's okay. record. Uh, I got our, our uh, times of entering the service wrong because I said I was the second one, but I was not the second one. Al was the second one. He went in in April. Uh, April 16, 1942, and I went in in September 24, 1942. When did John go in? John went out in at 43. And Al ended up in the European theater, and uh, he worked at Supreme Allied Headquarters with General Eisenhower was over in Germany. But what, what branch of the service was he? He was in the service. He was uh, Army? in the service. I know he was in the service. <laughs> he was in the signal call. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, and then John went in February 23, 1943, and he also ended up in the European theater, and he was in the postal service over there. He went in, uh, I think, the second day after D-Day over there. Mm. onto the beaches and they set up uh, postal service over there. <clears throat> and then Mike, he went in June 15, 1943, and he also ended up in the European theater. And he was in the combat engineers. And uh, so that's, that's the rest of them. Did they all stay till the war ended? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was something. Grand, what Al was discharged 
in December of 1945. And uh, uh, John was discharged in December of 1945. And Mike was discharged in March of 1946. What can do you? And I, I was discharged in February of 1946. And, Ed was discharged in October of 1945. What do you remember of that, Fran? I have five brothers gone. Well, I was left home with my mom. Yeah, were you so the only one just, home yet? Uh -huh. Two of you? Yeah, because my sisters were married and Frank was married. So it was just the two of us. So, and I was the one that had to uh, try to write to the boys to let them know, you know, because mm -hmm. my mom didn't write English. She could write in her Slovak, but not in English. So I um, finally, I w tried to write to all of them, and it got to be such a chore that I finally decided to type the letters, and I just carbon copied, and I did all five at once. That I was carbon a good idea. copied and then just wrote all everything I could think of, sure. and then just send them all these copies. Sure, that was nice. So then they all yeah. knew that the other one was getting the same news, yeah. too. So, and it was... Were you, um, you must have been listening to every radio broadcast. Oh, gosh, yes, yeah. Worried about them all, of course, my mom was. Sure. Really worried. Were you in high school then? I was in high school. Yeah. Mm. I graduated in 46, mm -hmm. so yeah. these boys were all gone. There must have been they a wonderful reunion when they came yeah. home. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice to get them all home. Yeah, isn't that that's a wonderful picture? And this is uh, this is a picture of uh, all of us in service, and my. Mother was the only one in the county that had five boys in the service. It's mm. amazing. And they all made it home one piece. Yeah, that's a blessing. That's a real blessing. And okay, let's. Um, you had your. Did you work in the front, in the drugstore all those years too? Did you do medical technology? I worked. Uh, is a medical technologist for Dr. Abby for several years. <coughs> I had the lab in, in his doctor's office. Oh, okay. But I can't remember just just what year I I quit that because uh, after we were into the new store, it was it was just too much. To when you were raising your family. Yes, yes, we had. The, okay, tell us about how many children you have. Seven children. The youngest seven. one was born 41 years ago today. Oh, we have a birthday today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charlie's birthday. Yeah. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good, Charlie. Yeah. Jacob, uh, boys and boys. Jared Kelly's boys. How today. many grandchildren did your mother have? Pretty lost track. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> I don't know. We'd have I don't to know if I had them ever. again. Oh, I thought... We had them counted up to a certain ya? point. And then, uh, uh huh. I don't know if anybody kept up. They raised 10 children who, in turn, gave them 47 grandchildren. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, at this time, which was, this is the 1990, was it? Yeah, this is the 1990. Uh, at that time, there were 86 great-grandchildren and four great-great-grandchildren. Well, now there's, that's not changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, they're, they've been gone a while, though, the folks. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's quite a record, though. Um, tell me a little bit about your life as connected with the church here in town. Well, there are members of St. Michael's Church and in the early days, we went to, they didn't have mass in Roscama, and so we went to church in Grayley. And How did you get there? I loaded us all in the old Model A, and away we'd go. <laughs> and uh, 
And then later on, they started having uh, the priests from Grayling come over here what, every other week or once a month or something like that before before they got uh, the church in Mascomet going. They had the building though by the by the time you were growing up, didn't they? We yes. went we went to the old church that, that uh, stood on the site where the, the white church. clapboard one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when they started building that, they moved the old church across the, the street over to that was behind uh, where Doc Hammond has it, had his office there. They did in that lot where which is now the parking lot. Yeah. They moved the old clapboard church over to there, and, and that's where we went to church until they got the new church built. Then what did they do with that building? It was torn down. It was? Yeah, my brother and uh, Don uh, Lake, who was the third one? Gilbert. Which brother? Oh, uh, John, my brother John, and Don Lake and Francis Gallagher tore that building down. Oh. So I imagine part of the lumber from that is in my in my brother's garage <laughs> <laughs> stuff. Okay, can you give me a little rundown of what jobs your brothers had? Because they all came back and lived here, didn't yeah. they? Okay. Al went into the postal service, and he became the postmaster in Roscommon and was the postmaster for thirty some odd years. And who did he marry? And he married uh, Kathleen Krause, who was a native of Grayley. Oh, okay. And uh, John ended up in the post office, too. And uh, he uh, retired from the post office, and he married a girl from, from Flint. Her name was Marnie Lake, who was Don Lake's uh, niece. Oh. And, uh, Mike, he went to work for the state finally, and he was in the, the uh, conservation department warehouse out at uh, uh, by the experimental station. I think he started at the training school. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he worked at the uh, uh, nursery with Ed. Uh, yeah, and he worked in the kitchen and training the, Are you the only one that went to college then? Yeah. Al went to business school in, in Traverse City. Oh, yeah, it said that. For a little while. After the service? Yeah. No. Was that after you got out or before? Yeah, that was before. Yeah, that was before he went to service. service. Mm -hmm. So he had a little business background. And uh, I ended up at. Ferris. I didn't think I'd ever get through, but I, I finally made it. Was it four years at that time? At that time it was four years and then a year's apprenticeship and then and, 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 and write the state board exam. Mm -hmm. Well, you're smart or you wouldn't have been a pharmacist. I know that. <laughs> he, he had one of the highest grades on the state board, too. So. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Second or third yeah. highest grade, but I had a, a real good uh, teacher down at Ferris that uh, uh, I had to go an extra semester because I missed somehow or other they didn't get me into a freshman English class, and so oh. the following year it wouldn't be offered, and mm. so I ended up graduating. Uh, uh, one credit short of oh, half an enough, and so I had to go back to summer school. Oh, and I didn't who feel was like, that teacher? Uh, the teacher was a, he was our chemistry teacher. His name was Jose Aponte. He was a, a uh, I went to fair. Puerto Rican, I think. But anyway, he wrote the first 100% State board exam that no, okay. anybody ever got 100% on. And he was a genius. He uh, 
had a memory like you wouldn't believe. He lectured day after day in organic chemistry and in inorganic chemistry. He never used a textbook. Mm. He'd come to class and, That's amazing. and take role, and then he'd say, where did we leave off yesterday? And so somebody tell him, tell him where we left off, and he'd start from there and, and keep going. Lecture for an hour. Mm -hmm. Next day he'd come back and he'd say, uh, "Did anybody check anything I told him yesterday?" And nobody answered. He says, "Well, if you did, you'd find out that that this and such is not right." Mm -hmm. He says, "I purposely." told you something that was wrong to see if you guys were paying attention and, and checking Ooh. your notes and stuff. <laughs> but he wrote the, the uh, inorganic chemistry book we used at Ferris. Oh my God. And, uh, How do you spell his last name? A-P-O-N-T-E. Aponte. A -P -O -N -T -E. Jose Aponte. He's still alive. He lives up uh, by Traverse City, at, I think at, on Spider Lake. Hmm. I saw him once, only once after I got through school, but he gave us a state board review uh, course. And I didn't want to just take one course, so I enrolled in that one too, and it's the mm -hmm. best thing I ever did because he went through uh, everything that would be covered on the state board exam, and he'd Great. say, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. And if you don't remember anything else, remember this. Mm -hmm. And I sat there writing my state board exam with a chuckle under my breath because everything he said not to forget was on that there state board was, exam. Huh? What wow. he had done, he had studied all the state board exams in the last 10 years or, or so. Okay, memorized everything that was on him. Uh -huh. wow. And then he gave us this course for, for the to prepare. summer to yeah. prepare. Great. He didn't have to. He, he uh, asked if we'd be interested in mm -hmm. state. He says, I'll be real happy to give you a, a state board review course if you, any of you want to take it. And uh, so I took it. Uh, there was some people that had taken it the state board that, that, that had already graduated that came back and took the, the course so that they'd be well, sure that was great. Yeah. Well, let's go back to um, your, your whole family activities in the church. Yeah. So, all, so all of your brothers and sisters are members of that same church? Yeah. And my mother was a lifelong member of the Altar Society that, that they called it then, now they call it CCW. And uh, I think every one of our kids was... All the grandkids baptized there? Pretty much? Pretty much. Yeah. And all of the, all of those boys were altar servers. Oh, and mm -hmm. Each one that went up. Mm -hmm. we, did your father also go to church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, That's neat. and Uncle Amo also, he was he was a member of St. Michael's Church. Now whose brother was he? He was my mother's uh, brother. He's the one that said owned this property here. Oh. And uh, when he moved from here, he uh, built a house on Shervin Lane, uh, the one that my brother John uh, bought after Uncle Amo died, he bought that house, remodeled it. Well, your family is certainly in. Then Marty Rootsegger bought it after John and Marnie moved to Arkansas. So John and Marnie live in Arkansas, and, and Justine now lives in Texas, and uh, of course Mike and Fran and I are still here. The boys stayed close to home. Paul, yeah, yeah and, that's nice. And Pauline, uh, she married a farmer, and, and they lived on on the Godfrey farm for a long time. And oh. and Bernie raised produce there, and eggs and stuff to to sell and and 
he didn't help Dr. Godfrey through medical school. And then when when Doc moved, he he went into practice in St. Louis, Missouri, as a dermatologist when he, when he got through college, and then from there he moved up to Traverse City, and and so him and uh, Bernie made a deal somehow or other, and 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 my brother-in-law he got the property out on on Four Mile Road, the farm over there, and Doc moved into the farm here. So, what was Bernie's last name? Maurer. Mm -hmm. M-A-U-R-E-R. -E oh. And his son has the, is he the bottling plant out on our farm there. Oh. He's the one that bottles the water out there. Mm. That, that farm was uh, Dr. Godfrey's and his father's. And his father's, yeah. And then Bernie came up and, and Went to work for, for yeah. Doc on the farm, and, and then he married my sister. So when he married Pauline, then, then they lived there at the farm, and Doc was in medical school, and, and then in the Army, and, and yeah. so forth. So when, when he came back to, to be in Roscommon and have his practice in Roscommon, then that was when uh, the Mowers moved to the, the other farm that Dr. Godfrey had purchased mm -hmm. on Four Mile Road used to be the Bennett farm. Hmm. This farm here used to belong to um, uh, the, barbers. the Barbers, Frank and Frankie Barber. And, and Frank and Frankie, you yeah, said? Frank. Father and son? No. no, husband and wife. Husband and wife. <laughs> Frank and Frankie. And they have several children buried in that Cheney Cemetery when they had the diphtheria epidemic, oh. and it were died just days apart, oh and buried out there. Of course, you can hardly tell their grave anymore. The, the kids have vandalized that cemetery so bad, they really? busted up all the oh, tombstones, and, no kidding. and uh, there's only just Does a few. Does it belong to a township or what? Yeah, Beaver Creek Township. And, uh, it was neglected and left to grow the weeds and stuff, and so I decided that my project was going to renovate that cemetery. So I got my lawnmower and side and axe and stuff loaded on the truck and went out there one day, I was gonna start on it, and I got there and it was all mowed. The township had decided to reclaim it, and so they had gone in and they'd mowed all the weeds and. The, blackberry briars and stuff, oh. and now they keep it mowed. Oh, that's nice. I don't know when the last funeral was out there, or burial was out there, but, but last year when the uh, VFW was going around the cemeteries having their programs, uh, Memorial, Day. Memorial Day, they went out to the Cheney Cemetery and had a, their program out there because there is one Civil War vet buried in the oh, Cheney Cemetery. Really? And I don't know if there are any World War Ones. They didn't seem to think there was any other veterans buried out there, just that one Civil War vet. A Civil War vet. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? The, um, Frank Barber was what, Eleanor Scott's? Grandfather? Either grandfather or, or great, great grandfather. Or great, maybe great grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Elder Barber Bush. Uh, Elder Bush. Is that Elmer's father? I, I think so. And then there was another one, Clarence, Barber. And Clarence, I think that was uh, uh, Bob Barber's. Is that Bob Barber's father, Clarence? I don't know. The family genealogies are really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you said you had a Model A that had you went. Had a Model A Ford. Did you? Your mother and dad had that. 
You no, mean? neither one of them could drive. Oh, you guys had my that. Brother Frank. Frank. Yes. Owned it. Frank. Frank. Frank owned the car. Well, one time he had a model T. Well, model when you were growing up here, then did you have? Did you get around with horses? No, you had a car by the time you were growing yeah, up. Because, because I moved from here when I was around two years old, year and a half, two years old. Okay. And I know they had a Model T then, and then then the Model A. But we walked to school. There's no school buses running mm -hmm. uh, out Sheridan Lane. There we walked to school for us, and then there. Neighbors, the Baloo boys, they, they lived down the road from us. And, and then uh, on the opposite side of the corner, next to where like, Fox lives, was the Bartonfelders were there. Uh, they had a, uh, Perry was a male, male man, and then they had a, a dairy. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I used to help Howard deliver milk after school. Hmm. When you were like a teenager? Yeah. What do you remember um, doing for... Perry Bartonfeller lived in that log cabin. That's on the corner there, like? Yeah. See, they lived... They lived uh, where Pierce is built, yeah. Just down, just down the road from Ike Fox. Down which road? Uh -huh. Still down Main Street, or yeah, down Main, the other one? Down Main Going Street. down Main. Yeah. What kind of fun things do you remember from town when you were growing up? Fun things? Yeah. Did you play baseball and that kind Basketball of stuff? Basketball and. Basketball. Basketball and, and we used to do a lot of ice skating. Where did you ice skate? Now Frank had a uh, ice rink. He built an ice rink behind his house. There, Rabbit Creek runs through his property, and he built a dam on Rabbit Creek and dammed it up. And, ah. and there was a, a marsh uh, upstream from the house. It was a marshy area. And he, he uh, flooded that, and then we went in and we shoveled all the, the uh, when it froze hard, then we went and we shoveled all the grass off. And then he raised the water up another couple of inches and we flooded it so it'd be smooth. Wow. And he even ran a, uh, electricity out there and put some lights up in the yeah. trees so we could skate well, at did, night. you did pretty well. Did you do, do that to a friend? Yeah, remember that? I used to skate there, yeah. It and, sounds like fun. And then he, Frank, undertook a project all by himself for a community skating rink. And that was uh, where the Craft Center gym is located now. Oh. He flooded that half a block there by hand. No kidding. And uh, got a the, uh, the uh, village furnished him a water hose so uh -huh. he could spray it. And he built it. Yeah. Village skating rink there. Well, that was a neat thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what years would that have been? Late thirties. Would you have still? Would you have been in high school then? You said you graduated. I think I was still in high school then. I know I was because what? I remember they had a a uh, snowball or whatever they used to call it, and back to the king and queen. Because that that year. Your um, Kenny Osling was the king, and, and Jane Howe was the queen. I can remember that. <laughs> that had to be and fun. John Donahue, he was down there skating all the time. He was a real good skater. Oh. He skated there all the time. That would be on the corner, that's the corner where the Galmer House used to be. Do you remember the Galmer yeah. House being yeah. there? Yeah. No, the skating rink was on the other corner. Oh, yeah. Right where the, where the gym sits. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the same corner the Galmer House was on? No, the Galmer House is on the, on the corner of the, next to the 
highway. Next to the highway. Uh, you know, it was, it was facing the highway. Huh? It was facing the highway. Yeah, but it was, it was the, what they call it. Fifth Street or something. Right. And, and, and the other corner is decent. Okay, well, let's see. We're going to run out of time. Is there anything else that, about your family that you'd like to share with us? Um, did you, you said. Well, you guys traveled in the service a lot. When you were children, you didn't travel a lot, did you? The farthest we got was to Grayling. When we'd go up to Grayling to go to church, and then later on, we used to, every once in a while, get up to Grayling to go to the movies. Oh, yeah. They, they had a movie. You could go down that one day. They had a movie theater before Ross Common did. Yeah. yeah. When the snow trains used to go up there, at the Hanson Hills, they mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Did the kids from here go up to Hanson Hills? Yeah. yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. yeah. You should go down there. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Went down yeah. at the bog and so I remember that one day, I don't know how many times I climbed that hill to go down that the bog. <laughs> Cost a dime. Our fun memories, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You had that big toboggan they called Suicide Sal, that they could go 120 miles an hour oh down my that hill. Yeah. I used to go down 10 down the hill. Yeah. Who did? So the name of Frank Deckero from Grayling. He worked out there at the. Oh my God. He'd, Did he'd you ski? Was the ski hill was skiing an activity when you were yeah, growing up? Yeah, and they had a they had a ski jump there at that time. And uh, did you do that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought they were crazy. Mm -hmm. I still do. Did but, your family go out to Higgins Lake very much? No. Yeah. No. I don't. Yes and a no. <laughs> I don't remember going to Higgins Lake. We used to go down to yeah, Twin to. Lakes. What's now? Did you go fishing? Did you fish the river? Yeah, we fished the river and, and fished Beaver Creek. At one time, all five of us would be on the river someplace <laughs> in, in different places. Uh huh. And, and the sink would be full of fish at night. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Full of trout. Did you get to cook them, Fran? <laughs> No, Margaret just handed me this standard contract for a rural line extension. That was when they ran the, uh, the uh, power the line electricity out, to you? out uh, there. And that was, the contract was signed in 1937, and I think the power was run out in 1938. So well, you had to be happy about that. So from 1938 on, we had electricity. Flux. Oh, wonderful. This is a contract that was signed by my, my Uncle Emil. Uh -huh. Customer guarantees, so long as this remains a customer, to pay a minimum monthly payment of $1 net or a dollar ten gross for power. That's something. What was that, 37? Huh? 37? Mm -hmm. That's when he signed the contract. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how old that was. Because I remember cleaning the the lamp chimneys, you know, when we had the bridge. Every night we had to clean yeah, the kerosene lamp, lamp chimneys. Get the things and filled. And did homework by can or the light of the lamp. I remember doing that. You were a good so, girl, Fran. <laughs> doing my homework. Every morning before I go to school, I milked four cows. We had, we had cattle there. We had to milk them before we go to school in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I think we're almost done, so I want to thank you for your time this mm -hmm. afternoon. You're welcome. And your good recollections. 
and that will be nice if we get a little um, statistic genealogy sheet together because of the um, there's so many of you to keep you all in order <laughs> um, but that's real nice we appreciate it I think that's about it I'm going to stop let's add a little bit about um, Fran working at all the, at the drugstores okay say that again <laughs> what you just said well, I have I went in to apply for a job when Harold Grease was there mm -hmm. and I was one of the I was the first soda jerk working for Harold Grease. And you were how old? And uh oh gosh. You were still oh, in high I school. I was in high school. I don't know what grade that was. But um about and then what I year? worked for Tell him. us about what year. Yeah, what that had been. Gosh. Maybe forty one or so. Okay. Was, I think Harold took I over the store early. in 41 or 42. Yeah, because... Because it was shortly after I went in the service. Okay, because I, I started just when he started the store. And he so bought I it from Mr. For him. Did he buy it from Mr. Patty? No, he bought it from Mr. DeWales. Oh, you said that already, DeWales. And okay. then I worked for Andy and Margaret on and off for... As long as they had the store. I am not mm -hmm. steady, but mm -hmm. because I raised my kids in between times. Mm -hmm. But whenever I could I and I finished up working in the new store. In the new store and then I finished up working with uh, <laughs> with Jeff and Nadine yet in their store. That's so right. I spent right my most of my life working in the drugstore. <laughs> you did. You did a fine job. It was very interesting. Yeah, I went to work at uh, the DeWale drugstore right out of high school in 1940. And uh, I worked uh, there until uh, went into service in 42. And, and sometime in, at that time, the DeWales closed it up and then, then Harold Oh, it was, was closed a while, you think? It, was, sure what's it, it wasn't closed for too awfully long. Harold was the pharmacist over at the Sobel store. For who? For uh, Ford Silsby. Oh, okay. And then, and then when that store became available, he bought it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I ran the soda fountain over there for, for, from the time I started in high school until, until I went in the service. I used to run that soda fountain. At Harold Grease's? Yeah. Okay. And, or at DeWale. De for DeWale, too. Oh. Okay. And then the, when Jeff was selling out the 